Future State, Superman and Wonder Woman, John Kent is grown up and so is Yara Fleur, two characters that seem like they're going to be getting a bigger push at DC fairly soon. Do they both get an ongoing or is John going to just be appearing in the Superman in Action Comics title? I know Yara is getting her own book, but is John? I can't remember. Okay, so I liked the first issue. I thought it was cute and fun. The God stuff was pretty interesting. The way Superman was overworking himself was pretty fun. This issue, it hit on some cool notes. I don't think it was the best book I read. I think it's very likable. The characters seem in character. The story was very fun. It, it obviously tied up the end of the book. And the other thing about this I will say is, I don't think you needed this one. If there was any that I think you could skip, it might be Superman Wonder Woman. Just because it's not like a big story that has any impact on the future of Future State or any of the stuff a lot of people might be interested in. It's cool, you're gonna smile, but I don't think it's that important. So we ended last issue, Jonathan, Jonathan kind of like passed out from like the red sun. So he wakes up in the Forges of Solitude to find Yara Fleur is just like trying to tame one of the like horse beast things of like the moon, I think, because the other one's the sun horse, right? I don't know. But John just is easy to tame it. And they get into a little conversation about what happened to John and how both of them are like overworked with the things going on there. So we see that in order to like stop Quaid from destroying everything, that Yaro's like, well, why don't we race? And then when we race, if you can beat the Wonder Woman, then you can win. But if I beat you, then you have to be defeated and you can't keep going on like this. And it's kind of like, okay. Well, we could do that. But as they're having this conversation, John realizes he has to do something very important. So he bursts away really quick. He comes back with this weird black hole gun. And he's like using this weird technology that Cho designed that's going to like save a planet from being destroyed. Something that he encountered when he was with the Legion of Superheroes, which if that's a callback to Legion of Superheroes, good for this book on being so progressively forward because I have no idea that was from there. If it is or not, that's great. Good for the book for thinking about that. It's kind of fun. So Superman realizes that this gun can kind of like use this weird black hole energy that it saves the world from like exploding and like disintegrating itself pretty much. So he's like, that's uh, I do that every day just to keep him alive. And Yara's like, well, you're really overworking yourself here, John, trying to keep up with everything your father did. And there's kind of having a conversation, you know, it, it's cute. I don't think it's like too over the top. It feels very much like the writer gets the characters, you know, like this is a Superman who is struggling to be in his father's footsteps. He's overworked. He's trying to find his way in this world. This is a Wonder Woman who's confident, sure of herself and was just like, yeah, I guess I'll race the sun. That's just what we're going to do, I guess. Whatever. So they step outside and both Solaris and Quaid are up there like, ah, Wonder Woman, it's time for our race. And Solaris is like, ah, Superman, it's time for you to face me. But they both are just like, this is just another day for us, isn't it? So exhausting. So full of so much stuff going on. But they decide, if we're going to have the bright idea, why don't I take the black hole gun, Yara says, and I'll go fight Solaris, and then you go race Quaid, because that's probably going to go better. So we see Superman shows up to Quaid. He's like, yo, how about instead of fighting a Wonder Woman, you see if you can win a race against a Superman? I'm sure that's going to help your status in the gods sound cooler. And he's like, hmm, well, me thinks that might be something worth doing. And we see that Yara's just like, yo, Solaris, Superman's kind of booked, so why don't we fight each other for a bit? And we have our missions, and they're going off. And we get a lot of the book. Like, I'm not going to go through every individual thing that happens in the races and in the fights because it's just like yeah you you, you kind of get it like superman's gonna struggle at first because of the red sun energy coming from quaid and solaris but as soon as yara is able to defeat solaris with the black hole gun that john's able to suddenly like rush through and beat quaid in a fight so the suns are defeated and you're like that's fun it felt very cool it, it I like the part of this book where it's like, yeah, let's just have a fun little story here. Superman's going to race a sun god for, like, dominion over Earth. Wonder Woman's going to shoot a giant sun with a black hole gun. It's fun stuff. It's really science fiction-y meets fantastical. And I like that the two switched the roles of, like, the fantasy and sci-fi, so the characters steeped in each mythology pretty much went over to the other one. That made me happy. I thought that was a pretty interesting thing to see and just very enjoyable. I kind of like their chemistry here because in the first issue we saw that John and Yara kind of were like opposing odds so they didn't agree with each other. Neither of them are on the Justice League anymore. And you're like, okay, I wonder why that is, but we see why that happened and we just we just enjoy it. It's really fun stuff. Superman just like punches the sun and extinguishes it because Quaid's getting pissed and he just brings Quaid back to Yara like, yeah, he's, he's good. Just take him. We're all good here. 
whatever's happening it's happened the world is better for it and we're having a good time so we see you know superman's just enjoying his days on earth yara's using the gun to save the planet and it's just it's just really fun superman's like how about we get some breakfast and all their friends again that's really cute it's a small book it actually breathed pretty easily for me because you're like okay superman's back awake him and Yar are going to have a conversation about how overworked they are and the things they have to do to fight their son people. They're going to switch roles and defeat their sons. There's not a lot to it. The dialogue is strong. I think it's very interesting. Yara continues to be a standout in this world. She's just a very unique and very compelling character. But other than that, I don't believe there's a lot going on here that's going to make you go, this is brilliant, this is masterful, I enjoy it a lot. I think you'll just be like, oh, that was a fun, cute little read. A very Superman story of like racing a god and a deity in some aspect. Very Wonder Woman just like, I'm going to use my brute strength to take out an enemy. It's fun. Nothing else to it. It's just really fun and cute. So it's going to make you happy. It looks consistently good in terms of the artwork. The writing is consistently strong. It's not an over-the-top story. So you'll be satisfied with what you're getting. And if you're not, then you can skip it. And it won't matter to you either way because the book's done. Like, we're, we're closer to the end of Future State than we are to the beginning of it. So, it's a two-issue book. You're either going to like it or not. It's not really going to leave you thinking anything else. So, that's something to keep in mind when you pick this up. But it's fine. I hope you guys check it out. And if you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, Superman Wonder Woman issue number two. I am going to give a seven out of ten. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.